All right, I'm back. And we got ourselves some Ruse Brewing, Exiles Among You, American Style IPA. This was actually my uh, dinner beer, so it's pretty much gone here. Actually, I already had that one in a video, so I ain't too worried about it. The Shave Beer is Forland Beer Company, and this one is Shape Creation IPA. So, very uh, simplistic label there, not too much going on, but they do give us some good notes in the back. So, they call it an Upper Left IPA, 6.5%. And it's a mainstay of their collection. Appearance is bright, luminous, and golden. I'll be the judge of that. And it's dank, citrus, and tropical fruits is the character. Choice hops are what make great IPAs. Shape Creation IPA uses a combination of Mosaic and Simcoe as character hops. This pair helps the beer take shape by individually bringing flavor notes that are showcased by the dry finish. So that is... All right there, some pretty great uh, notes on the back. All right, let's crack it open. We shall see about that. I got the Rubens Brews glass here, and it is quite the light-colored uh, IPA here. All right, not too shabby at all. It might look a little bit darker on camera, but in person, it's got... Uh, a somewhat bright hue to it. Nice, uh... It's more of a floral than citrus nose. That's super crushable. It's got like this medium malt body, just a little bit of sweetness, not overbearing or anything like that. It's kind of a clean slate for the hops to shine. The hops aren't overly bitter. I would say the hops are uh, kind of like in the low medium range. But since the, the body is so like clean, you could still pick them out really easily. This is a very crushable uh, IPA. It does have a little bit of bitterness and a little bit of like tropical fruit, but the overall like experience is like a kind of like mid-body um, experience and I think I could throw these back no problem not bad at all all right we're gonna be using Maddie Lynn home shaving supplies ecto cooler and this one is a product of Sweden it was made for Marion the Barbarian in his um, uh, desire for a ecto cooler themed shave soap so you can see the ingredients and the uh, 70 gram puck size right there shaving with raza made the label on that one i already got it whipped up right here in my lancaster razor works uh shave bowl and it kind of looks like a kind of a clumpy sudsy mess but that's all right and there's the beautiful Lancaster razor works bowl we got the sawdust creation studios um forgot what he called this one i think he called it plum crazy but very nice uh handle shape it's got a paragon shaving bore knot on top and we did something a little bit different we took the the chiller and the pillar, uh, the menth dealer, and we took those menthol crystals and put it into the bloom water that was in the bowl with the, the soap that was soaking, and we kind of did like a IMCDB move where he's been kind of like melting his menthol crystals in like a little bit of water before adding it to his lather. So I actually let the bloom water sit with the menthol crystals while my brush was soaking in the whole nine yards. So we'll see how that goes today. The menthol has already been added. 
I am noticing now that it's sat out for just a few minutes that the soap does kind of look a little, a little strange, but this is experimental after all, so I'm not gonna, definitely not gonna judge it too much. I do know for a fact that Maddie Lindholm shaving soap is good shit. Simplistic ingredients list, but really good quality nonetheless. And Maddie is a fucking awesome member of the shave community. So let's take this, apply some lather to the face, and we'll just play it by ear, see what happens. The Paragon bore brush has became quite soft at this point. The tips barely barely scrub whatsoever very soft very comfortable it's not the densest knot in the world either so it's kind of like don't really got to worry about it eating too much lather and you don't really got to worry about it um, kind of being a leather hog because it's not that dense and it gives up the lather somewhat easily Maddie Lindholm soap doesn't create like the densest lather by any means. It's kind of like a medium density to mid to mid light density, and that's before you add additional uh, menthol crystals to it, which I did. Did something this time that I've never done before, so I'm kind of seeing and experiencing how the soap will react to it um, you know for the first time here it's definitely not the first time I've added menthol to a Maddie Lindholm soap but I'm pretty sure Ecto Cooler has a low level menthol as is correct me if I'm wrong Maddie or Marion or anybody but I added more to it and it kind of gave me more of a kind of like clumpy um, it's not under hydrated but it's just it has this weird texture now I don't know I'm sure it'll still shave great so now that we're seven and a half minutes in we are doing another comparison and sorry if this video goes long but I got two carbons in my den and I intend to put them to work so one of them if you can see the plus plate right here one of them is the plus plate, the R1 handle, which was generously um, lended to me from JB Broman um, on Instagram, as well as one of my followers and subscribers. Thank you, bro. I appreciate you. And then the other one here, you won't see um, any designation on this portion because this is the original uh, regular plate. So this is kind of like the base base plate base base um, and this one has the V2 handle the one with the indentation in the middle that I don't like at all and this one was generously lended to me by so sharp David so let us get into it we'll do the least aggressive with my prominent hand which will be the right side both of these have a second use Willie's blade on them and those would be the same exact Willie's blades that were used in the first comparison video so trying not to stray too far off with these videos but I kinda don't see any need for new blades every single comparison especially when I'm keeping it so close as is now the original plate which is the one that I'm using in my right hand that has a 0.68 millimeter um, blade gap and I'm imagining perhaps neutral uh, blade exposure I'm guessing. Like I said, their website wasn't 
a huge uh, resource. It didn't help much. I don't know if it's just because things weren't in stock or if it was because they're changing stock. Not 100% sure, but it wasn't a huge resource other than the blade gaps, which was kind of a bummer. It's a premium, you know, luxury offering. You would kind of think, or you would kind of hope, that they would offer a bit more info, but perhaps not. And now this lather is looking rather dry on me, and I can tell because of... Well, you can't even see it because it's pretty full, but it's getting harder to rinse out. So that is a telltale sign of a dry lather. And that would be my bad. I did load somewhat heavy because I wanted to add more menthol to the soap and I didn't want the additional menthol to to kill the lather because menthol is known to kill the lather and I am known to add a shit ton of menthol to my shaves so I tried to take necessary precautions um, so that I had enough lather to get a shave in. But it would appear that I maybe underhydrated the soap. I will get that lather out. Alright, so this pass we're going to try to incorporate a little bit more water uh, for the sake of a better lather. And while I am at that, um, I'll tell you, the plus plate is 0.88 millimeters blade gap. So um, about 0.2 millimeters more open than the original. <clears throat> On that first pass there, they were both very smooth. So there's the there's the minus plate, the original plate, the plus plate, and a plus plus plate. And so right now I'm using kind of both of the middle options. Very smooth, very comfortable. Um, there is blade feel, but even more so than the plus plus plate the the blade feel is very very non-threatening and that looks a lot less clumpy I am human and I am open to making mistakes and I think on that first pass I just didn't have enough water now, did it affect my shave at all? No. There was still slickness to be, to be had. There was still slickness to be enjoyed. But was it enough slickness, you know, to keep my lather channels from filling up? No, it wasn't. So, I made an adjustment, an audible. And now I think we'll be in a better position. Could probably add more and work it a bit more, but like I said, I definitely had enough slickness on the first pass, so I'm definitely gonna have enough slickness on this uh, subsequent pass. I ain't worried about it. I do have a nice kind of like mid-level of chill right now. I know you guys, I didn't, do the pumps on camera but I'll tell you what you, just cause you didn't get the preview pumps doesn't mean that I didn't fucking crank it down cause I definitely cranked it down alright <laughs> all kinds of fucking uh, 
jokes to be had there. Against the grain. Very smooth. Now, if you weren't keeping track, this is the original plate, the base base. One thing about these carbons is I do not feel like they have the best blade clamping. And therefore there is a bit of blade chatter. And when I loaded the blade on both of these, there was a very little, but still noticeable, amount of wiggle room. You know, when you're putting your blade in the in the head of the razor. You know, with a premium offering, a lot of times you don't even need to give it a second look. You don't need to give it a second thought. It's just going to line up 100% dead center every single time. And that's just because the tolerances are so, you know, are so tight and they are in such a way that the blade is just going to align perfectly no matter what. With both of these carbons, there is ever so slightly a bit of wiggle room, so not a fan of that. I would much rather have my blade in there and it would be dead fucking solid in the center. Alright, switching hands, going to the plus plate carbon. I will take a second to say that the scent on this Maddie Lynn Home Shaving Supply soap is pretty much just sweet orange and menthol a vibrant citrus scent and I figured we would get a dual theme uh, Monday shave in today with Maddie Monday in accordance with menthol Monday and get the best of both worlds there why not Now, I did, I felt this one. There has been a reoccurring weeper there for like the last three days. I felt this, and I knew it was there. I was just kind of hoping, I, I got away with it on the with the grain pass, and I was hoping I wouldn't snag it, but it's one of those ones that just keeps getting snagged shave after shave. This other one, though, right here, I think that's just a weeper. Um, because it doesn't really feel like it's a blemish, so kind of a bummer if it is a weeper, but it is what it is. All right, let's go ahead and rinse this lather off and kind of feel how we did. If anything, both of those plates were very smooth, but it was slightly noticeable that there was more blade feel on the plus plate nothing to be afraid of and even the plus plus plate i don't feel like is egregious but perhaps if you're not a fan of blade feel just stick to the plus plate or the original plate and if you're really a fan of mild shaves then stick with the minus plate all right so, pretty much, I think the original, the plus, or the plus plus, right now in, in my limited experience with them, I think any of those would be fine for me. Um, I think I would do the original 
or the plus plate as my daily driver and stick the plus plus as more of a you know two plus day growth um, shaver I just don't need any extra um, efficiency with the type of beard growth that I have kind of kind of overkill when I'm only shaving my upper cheeks and my lower neck that efficiency is kind of overkill for me but I do appreciate and enjoy the feel of a little bit of blade feel not to the point where it's aggressive but just like blade feel for the sake of blade feel and it's non-threatening I do enjoy that Alright. As per usual, I got all kinds of lather trapped in the beard. The bane of my existence. I will get the remainder off camera because nobody wants to see that shit. I gotta take a drink. It's even annoying me. Alright. We are gonna finish off with Mile Mall Male Grooming um, in collaboration with Talbot Shaving Okuma. And this is a citrusy uh, aquatic and this one was made in collaboration with um, Ross and Ross is a another excellent wet shaver in the community the cap on this one broke for me and so that's why I decided to shake it after I took the cap off I just put my thumb over the um, reducer oh yeah Still has a wonderful scent. I'm sure the alcohol has burned off from this one because, like I said, the cap broke and it's been sitting out on my counter. And I try to use it as often as I can, but I like rotating in other gear, so it is what it is. It is a wonderful citrus aquatic, though, and it has this kind of twang to it that makes it pretty unique. But I enjoy it a lot. I ain't mad at it. And the male grooming um, aftershave formula will for sure leave my skin feeling great. So, right there. Good stuff. Alright guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope I gave you a little bit of info and a little bit of insight on those uh, two different uh, blade gaps and uh, base plate offerings. Both of them, very comfortable. And I don't really think there's a world of difference between them. If you like a little bit more blade feel, go with the plus plate. If you like a fair amount of blade feel, fair amount of efficiency, go with the plus plus plate. If you like it mild, obviously go with the minus plate. And if you're a daily shaver that just wants comfortable shaves, just stick with the fucking original. Alright. Cheers, guys. I appreciate you, and I will catch you on the next one.